Hey guys. So this week I'm going to answer a question I get all the time, which is why do we do this? My name is Zachary Lytle. I've been fighting robots professionally since I was 13 years old. I've won gold medals, uh, tournaments all over the world. And, uh, everyone always asks me, why do I do this? So Ray Billings once described robot fighting as Imagine buying a brand new boat. Imagine driving that boat for 10 minutes. And then imagine setting that boat on fire. And that's what it's like to be a heavyweight robot. <laughs> a heavyweight robot fighter. <laughs> and the description's not wrong. <laughs> so, um, because <laughs> the robots cost anywhere from 20 to 50 grand. Every year we need to build a new one. Um, every time a robot does really poorly, that, that usually means they brought back the old one because they're like, it still has some life in it. It, it didn't. Usually doesn't. <laughs> um, so, why do we do this? Now, I know some of you think, well, at least the champions go home with uh, enough money to pay for this. No, that's not true either. The, uh, the champion just loses the least amount of money. Uh, the actual prize money that comes with the giant nut is 10k. And when most of us spend 20 to 50k each season on our robots, that 10k covers your screws. I, I know that sounds crazy, but I have spent $10,000 on screws in one year. Uh, McMaster kept all the receipts and told me. They sent me the book. Um, so... It's not the money. None of us are in this for the money. None of us are getting rich doing this. Is it, is it really that much fun? Uh, building robots competitively is usually um, 18 hour days. What I mean by that is you go do eight hours at work and then you come home and you have a commute on either side. So that's like 10 hours. And then you come home and you have to weld or build for at least six if you want to do anything competitive. And uh, it is a lot of long nights. And that's not the part you're excited for. And it, it's not when someone rips your robot in half and all of a sudden you have to fix it. Or you have to have built a whole spare. Uh, that's not the fun part. The fun part is that three minutes when everything fades away and it's just you and the robot in the arena and you're fighting something else to the death. When you have a crowd cheering behind you and nothing, nothing replicates that high in that moment. And, uh, I think that's why, I think that's the most common thread between all the builders of why we do this. But for me personally, you, you have to know a little bit more about me. I'm severely dyslexic. There's an 80% difference in my test scores from when someone reads me the question as opposed to when I try to read it myself. And I was, I was told my whole life I would grow up to be a janitor. I, in my grade school, the janitor handed me a mop and said, kid, you better learn how to do this. I actually appreciated that guy. Because every time something was hard, I remembered him saying that and it made me work harder. I didn't appreciate him in the moment or for the next 10 years. But looking back on all the metals and the giant bolt. I kind of appreciate the fire he lit under my butt. But I, I grew up knowing I was smart, but everyone else telling me I was dumb. And I was, I was looking for something. I could tear anything apart. I could put anything together. It's why I knew my head was just wired differently than everyone else. And even though reading and writing have always been extremely difficult for me, um, mathematics and assembly 
has always been extremely easy. When everyone else reaches for instructions for a piece of Ikea furniture, I just slap the thing together. Uh, when people are like, oh, I lost the instructions to my Lego set, I'm like, well, what do you want? And I build it. And it's it's been a weird skill I have always had. And I've always looked for a way to, to prove to people I am as smart as I say through building. And uh, I looked and looked and looked as I was a kid. And finally, I saw BattleBots on TV. The first episode I ever saw was Disposable Hero vs. Backlash. And I, I knew right away this was for me. This is where I could go shine. Because it wasn't who filled out their paperwork correctly. It wasn't who studied and memorized the dates. It all of a sudden was who could build the better mousetrap. And oh God, I wanted to build the better mousetrap. <laughs> um, that night I took all the copper out of my parents' Christmas lights. My mother still hasn't forgiven me for that. And uh, I started trying to wire my own robot. The radio was the hardest part. I, I could get motors to spin, I could get something to drive forward, but I I was struggling with the radio half. And uh, my father took me to Hangar One Hobby. It was this little airplane, radio controlled airplane store in Santa Rosa. And uh, I saw my first radio. They were $600, but it was the radio I needed. And uh, my dad told me I should try to find a sponsor. I, I put a pitch deck together and I, I asked all the different businesses that I could find the owners and get in front of. And I think after about 20 places turned me down, uh, my father took me to one last day's hardware. He goes, I, I called this guy, go in there. And uh, Pedrati Ace Hardware was my, my very first sponsor. He gave He agreed to give me $600, the exact amount of money I needed to go get that radio. I, I found out years and years and years later when I, I went to go show him my first gold medal from Robo Games. He goes, yeah, I, n I never cared about what you were doing, kid. Y your dad gave me that money and told me when you walked in to listen to your pitch and then give it to you. <laughs> I will always appreciate the fact my father did that for me. So I got my first robot, I went to Robo Games, and I, uh, I had Dr. Inferno destroyed in 30 seconds. I spent four years making that robot. Four years. And uh, he, he crushed it in about 30 seconds. <laughs> um, I had people coming out of the audience who wanted to see the rubble. I do mean rubble. <laughs> And uh, I remember this one kid who, he picks up a big armor chunk and he's like, wow, this, this actually is tough. You know, from the stands, it looked like you just had tinfoil on the outside of your robot. I was like, oh. So I, I kept building, I kept getting better because I, I knew this was my calling. And... I actually started taking, uh, my parents started homeschooling me, and as soon as I wasn't being held back in the special ed courses, I went from my current math level to algebra, and uh, my parents could no longer teach me my math. It was too advanced for them, so they got me enrolled as a high school enrichment student in uh, the Santa Rosa Junior College, where I met all my favorite professors. And uh, all of a sudden I was a 13 year old in college <laughs> with a destroyed robot under my belt and a few other things. I, I continued building more and more robots and eventually I won my first gold medal, which got me a scholarship to go to a four year college where I did study robotic engineering. I ended up graduating with a different degree, but
but I, uh, <laughs> the 2008 recession hit. They canceled the uh, classes I needed for the robotics degree. They told me to restart as a mechanical. I wasn't willing to do that. I wasn't willing to add two more years and take out more student loans. So I, I tore through the syllabus and I found a degree I was just one semester away from finishing. And I finished it. <laughs> I, uh, I continued on at RoboGames, crushing more and more things. And robot fighting was really in my blood. It was part of my identity. Um, without it, I really didn't know what I was. And in my time at Chico State is actually when I started Bot Bash. Um, I missed RoboGames one year. And I, I was so sad I missed it. I, I put all my robot building towards something else. And I, I put it towards starting Bot Bash so I could give Leif Alexander uh, the very first party. <laughs> it was one of those things I was just kind of a, a college student going, yeah, I'll do that someday. And then Leif came by and was like, I want it in October. Finish it. So, back to my original question. Why do we do this? I kept at this till I had 10 gold medals, two bounty medallions, a giant bolt, because I wanted to prove to everyone I was smart. <laughs> and uh, I, I now work as an engineer at a state-of-the-art tech firm here in the Bay Area. And people have always looked at my portfolio more than my degree. And to everyone out there, the, the degree opens the door, but that's it. That's literally it. Um, they want to know what you can do. They don't, it could be a master's degree from Stanford. It won't mean anything if you can't read calipers and then start modeling something in SOLIDWORKS. And so, to everyone out there, just do it. <laughs> I, uh, half the engineers around me just did it. And that that's honestly more important than anything else. So at the end of my long rant, I'm going to say to you, just do it. There's literally, whatever you're saying to yourself right now is the reason you can't do it. That is just an excuse you are using. And I don't care how important it seems. I had a heart condition that was supposed to have killed me by this point. And so I didn't have any time to waste. I just did it. Go take the copper out of your, Christmas, your parents' Christmas lights. <laughs> Get started however it takes. Um, those of us who fight robots, we do it for the love of the sport. And I do mean love of the sport. We do this because we don't want to do anything else. We do this for that three minute high and then high fiving all of our fellow builders afterwards. And that's why we do it. <laughs> You don't do it for the fame. I guess we're doing it for the glory. But, um, that's why we build robots. So, I'm really hoping uh, BattleBots announces something, not season eight. Well, I do want them to announce that, but they're working on something else. And I want them to announce it so I can show you the videos I have saved up. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful night. I'll see you next week. Oh wait, oh wait, this is a video. This is like a video that keeps going. <laughs>